All right, here we go with unit five, physical behavior of matter. And the first thing we're gonna look at in this unit is energy. All right, so energy is defined as the ability to do work. And there are two main types that we're gonna be concerned with in chemistry. And one is kinetic energy, which hopefully you remember from middle school, is the energy of motion, and potential energy. Also from middle school is the energy of position, or stored energy. All right, now, chemical energy, or when we deal with chemistry, right, chemical energy is potential energy, and it's stored in chemical bonds. And if you remember, B-A-R-F, barf. When you break a bond, you absorb energy, okay? The bond actually absorbs energy in order to break it. And when a bond is formed, energy is released. Okay, heat versus temperature. And a, a lot of people kind of seem to think of these as the same, but they are different and understanding the differences between heat and temperature is going to become very important for us. So heat is a unit of energy and it transfers from warmer objects to cooler objects. And you should remember this from biology when you talk about diffusion, right? Things move from an area of higher concentration to lower concentration. Well, heat energy does the same thing. It goes from high concentration warmer objects to low concentration cooler objects and the more mass an object has the more heat the object can hold the units of measurement for heat are joules or kilojoules very important to remember heat and temperature are not the same okay Temperature is the average kinetic energy of a substance. And you're going to see a lot of questions where it talks about substances having the same or different average kinetic energy. Basically, what that boils down to is same temp equals same average kinetic energy. And temperature is going to either be measured in degrees Celsius or kelvins and most of the time we're going to use kelvins all right temperature scales we talked a little bit about this year about these this year but the main two we're going to use degrees celsius and kelvins and if you look on table two right it gives you the relationship between them where kelvin is degrees celsius plus 273 okay and zero degrees celsius is equal to 273 Kelvins. 100 degrees Celsius is equal to 373 Kelvins. And a change of 1 degree Celsius is the same as a change of 1 Kelvin. Or in equation form, right, is delta, it's the Greek letter delta, and it means change. So a change of 1 degree Celsius is equal to a change of 1 Kelvin. Now we go back to the scale here. Right? If Kelvin is equal to degrees Celsius plus 273, degrees Celsius is equal to Kelvin's minus 273. And we have to be able to do both of these. And we have done these before. All right, so if we look at our temperature scales, right, Fahrenheit, we're not going to re really use at all. But we can see here that 100 degrees Celsius is equal to 373 Kelvin. Zero degrees Celsius is equal to 273 Kelvins. Minus 273 Kelvins, uh, minus 273 degrees Celsius is equal to zero Kelvins, which is also known as absolute zero. All right, question time. Okay, very simple calculation. Should be able to do it by now. Should be able to do it by now. Straight up temperature. As always, you should be ready to be able to answer these questions when you come to class. All right, that brings us to the end, and I will see you guys in school.